Hey everybody, this is Piranha Z06 coming to you from my downtown condo man cave and I've got a new addition to the rig that I'm really excited to share with you today, so let me show you. Okay, so at first glance nothing looks majorly different. Uh, you may notice if you really compare videos that my monitors are higher than normal. That's because I raised them about five or six inches to accommodate this new addition and I've got this on fisheye lens right now to get the whole rig in frame right now, but I'll go back to one here and zoom in. And as you can see, there are two motor actuators right there. That's uh, right behind the pedal tray, a few inches in front of the front seat area. And then also two back here. And you may recognize these if you have seen videos about motion systems before, but this is a D-Box system. Four actuators, obviously, the 4250 is the model number. This is a Gen 1 system. Uh, they're up to Gen 3 now. The major differences between one and the then two and three are what I understand to be active versus passive um, systems. So right now, the way I understand it is they push up actively, but they lower somewhat passively. Um, using gravity, I guess, or I'm not 100% sure. I just know the Gen 2 and Gen 3s pull actively just as much as they push, and that's so that you can mount them horizontally on systems to get the sway or the, uh, the uh, yaw uh, twisting motion. So that's not, I'm, this is a three degree system, so it goes up and down in the Z axis. It tilts front and back, which is pitch, and then it tilts left and right, which is roll. So uh, I did have to make a few modifications for this to fit. So the first modification, actually probably the last modification that I did was I had to move my keyboard tray and mount it to the monitor stand instead of the upright where the steering wheel is mounted. Just the system would handle it and I actually had it mounted directly onto this, the upright there, the wheel upright, and it worked perfectly fine. It just the keys on the keyboard rattle a whole lot. So I didn't want that constant rattling every time I was in the rig. Uh, so I made the arm with some spare parts and connected it and it works just as good as before. Probably actually a little better because the keyboard now, since it's moved to the left a few inches, is actually more centered when I sit and put the keyboard tray in front of me. So, and I'll just demonstrate that so you can see for sure. I tightened everything up so it's a little stiffer than normal. And as you can see, the keyboard tray is almost perfectly centered in front of where I would be sitting. Sorry, put the finger there. So that works pretty good. So the other modifications I had to do to the rig though, were I had to, because I wanted the motor mounts to be mounted inside, um, and I wanted them as far back as possible, I had to move the seat, the seat six or so inches forward, 150 millimeters exactly. I, uh, measured that off on and so I had to move both of the seat cross members forward. I also had to move the pedal tray forward. So basically I started at the pedal tray and moved it as far forward as possible and then measured how far that was and then came back as I worked my way back moved everything else forward. So you may ask why I wanted them on the inside. If you think about it, the closer the motor mounts are together, the more effective travel there will be at the top. So where my head is, shoulders and will move left and right more because the two motors are closer together. If they're further apart, think of them as 50 yards apart. And if they only, they only move up and down the same amount. So if they were 50 yards apart, you would barely even feel that left and right motion. So the closer you bring things together, the motors together, the more effective twisting you will feel. So that's, I mean, that's a good, probably eight inches on each one closer together, mounting them internally versus externally. Maybe not quite that much, maybe, maybe six or seven inches. But either way, um, it, will make, it will make the experience a lot more, uh, I'll feel the motion a lot more. There, there will be actual more physical movement. There will, my shoulders will move more inches left and right 
by mounting them internally than they would if they were mounted externally. Um, other than, like I said, raising my monitors and moving the keyboard tray, um, I raised my power supplies over here higher up. Uh, did a lot of rewiring. Doesn't look like it as, as usual because I just have so many wires. Uh, it's fairly organized. I know what everything is and where it's plugged into. It's just, and I've tried, as I've said before, I've tried um, a lot of cable management to be very meticulous and uh, not see the wires. And that just is a pain in the butt whenever you have to trace a problem. So I do a minimal amount to keep wires from getting caught on anything, even though it may not look like it. There's no wires that are being pinched or caught anywhere. I've checked and rechecked and triple checked to make sure nothing is getting pinched in any of the movement. And so um, this works for me right now. So as you can see, I still have a butt kicker clamped on there, just like before. And I still have the one under the seat. Um, but I'm not sure, I haven't done enough testing yet to know if I'm going to remove those and resell them. So that's to come later. If, the, if it doesn't, if I don't need them, if the vibration is enough, then I will sell them. If it's not, I will keep them. In a, or I may move one over to the gear shift area. I know a lot of people who have multiple butt kickers, they'll put one at each corner and then one on the gear shift so that you get that nice clunk when you change gears but this system does all of that too. And honestly, when I change gears, you feel the clock. So I'm, I don't think I'm going to end up reattaching the Gamer 2s, but I'm leaving them in place until I make that final decision. Um, I did uh, one other, oh, the, uh, I had to do a lot of mounting solutions for the control boxes. So I did very similar to Sim Racing Garage. I got two, um, one inch, Let's see if you can see it there. See, just normal aluminum, one inch profile, or yes, um, and just mounted the same brackets as he used. Found them on 8020.net and connected them. There's two boxes in there one for the front two, one for the rear two. And I got this system from a reseller who's been working with D Box for over 20 years. And you may know him, uh, Ken D-Box is his name on Facebook and his Facebook group. So a big shout out to Ken. He has probably spent two hours or more typing back and forth with me over the last month and checking out and getting details about this system. Um, he offers warranty. He does a refurb of these. He gets these from theaters that use motion seats. And a lot of them went out of business during COVID. And so he bought or picked up, I don't know how his business works, but he obtained a lot of the, um, the seat systems and he puts them together in kits and resells them. And so if you are interested in that, please send me a message and I will uh, forward you his information if you're interested in a system. So uh, like I said, he offers a warranty. If uh, any of the, mo it's a two year warranty. So that's good enough for me. Uh, the price was right uh, versus new. And I, if I changed my mind and wanted to get rid of them tomorrow, I could probably get every penny of my money back because this is D-Box. I mean, a full new D-Box system is about $17,000. These were nowhere near that much because they're Gen 1s and refurb, but that's the kind of quality they are. These are top of the line. These are what Disney uses. These are what all the motion sim um, um, theaters and stuff use. These are top of the line systems. So. Uh, I have no doubts that I could get my money back at any time. So it's an investment. Uh, obviously, I would take a little loss, just like any ownership of an item, but uh, I have no worries. I'm, and I might probably could even sell them back to, to Ken, maybe, if, he, if I decided to get rid of them. But I don't think that's going to be the case because I've only done a few laps, and wow, is it immersive. It feels like a real car uh, moving and bouncing around. Uh, I'm going to have to do some tuning to just fine tuning to make sure it feels how I want to, um, but that's still to come. But I just wanted to get this out and share it with everyone because it's new and, and cool and I, I absolutely love it and would recommend it and would recommend Ken. So uh, that's it for today. Again, if you want any of that information, let me know and I'll get it to you uh, right away. Thanks guys.